Hello everyone, this is Han Han Li. I'm presenting our paper on supervised monocular depth learning and dynamic scenes. Unsupervised monocular depth learning from videos is a very, very popular research topic uh, in recent years. The way it works is follows. You take a pair of a frame and you use CNN to predict the depth map and the eagle motion between the two frames. And the supervision comes from the consistency between the two views. In many of the early works, it assumes that the scenes are static. So basically the two views differ by a rigid motion. However, moving objects violate this assumption. As a result, you get a failure cases like the one showing below. So basically in the depth map, uh, there's a hole on the region of the moving car. So it's obvious that the object motion needs to be taken up into account. So basically in each pixel, there are three motion components, X, Y, and Z. There are a lot of degrees of freedom so we need to apply some regularization. And prior works, regularization come from auxiliary semantic cues. Typically apply a segmentation model to isolate the moving object and assume that motion only happens within the regions of the moving objects. However, in our work, we try to do away with semantic cues. Here's the training setup. We have two networks, the depth network and the motion network. Both of them are based on UNet architecture. The depth network produces the depth map from a single image. And during training, we apply it independently on the two frames. The motion network produces the equal motion vector and the object motion map from a pair of frames and their associated depth maps. We use the motion information to transform one frame to another and we'll apply the consistency between the two views. We also apply regularization loss on the depth map and the motion map. So we do end-to-end -to -end training of the motion network and the depth map work. And the, op and the object of occlusion is taken differentially. Here's how we regularize object motion map without semantic cues. We have two observations on object motion. It tends to be sparse and it tends to be piecewise, piecewise constant. It tends to be sparse because it's only there for moving object and it tends to be piecewise constant because typical, because most of the time objects moving, uh, objects are making translational motion. So it's constant around the region of object. If we go to a different object, it's also constant there and it's zero on the background. So it tends to be piecewise constant. We apply L1 half norm on the object motion map to encourage sparsity. It, perf it performs better than, and than L1 norm. We also apply L1 norm on the gradient of our object motion map to encourage, P, to encourage it to be piecewise constant. Here's the quantity result on the depth predictions. We tested on three data sets. So on Cityscapes and the Waymo, our results are better than, the, and then are better than prior arts in all metrics. And the TD, our method is kind of on par with the prior art. And we think the reason is that like the dynamic scenes are pretty rare in KD, so our method doesn't help that much. Here's some qualitative results on three data sets. So it shows both like depth predictions and object motion predictions. The depth predictions are pretty reasonable for a wide range of depths of fields and the object motion uh, roughly captures like the area of the moving object. The three data sets are Cityscapes, uh, Waypo open data set, and the YouTube data set. The YouTube data set kind of is curated by us. It consists, uh, it consists of a bunch of random videos taken with walking cameras. This slide shows some videos of the predicted depth map on the Waymo open data set. So you can see the depth maps are pretty reasonable for scenes both at day night and at night. Thank you.